is to continue continually struggling with cancer and other health issues. The list of those names are in the bulletin, so if you would pick up one of those bulletins. Whitney Keenan's brother, Kevin Green, has been diagnosed with esophagus, esophagus cancer. Lance Brown's father, Jim Brown, has been hospitalized with COVID and UTI and low oxygen level. So you need to remember Jim. The ladies' Monday Bible study will meet the, in the church office at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. The new books are in and are $15 a piece. See Gina for any questions with that. The Longs will be taking the teens to unite at Center Hill this afternoon. The bus will leave the building around 420. If your teen would like to go, please contact Tyler or Joanna. We will be hosting Sons Plus One March 11th from 5 to 7 p.m. Now this is for boys 6th grade and below and their moms or someone who fills that role. We plan on having food and games, and please see the longs for any questions regarding that. The season will have a game night next Sunday evening, March 12th at 4 p.m. Bring your favorite board games, cards, trivia, anything you'd like. This event will be potluck style, and hope to see you there. We will be having a teen devo at the Farleys on March 17th at 7 p.m. The van will leave the building at 6.30. Please let Tyler know if your teen can come or if they can bring friends with them. We will have a ladies paint party at the building on Friday, March 24th at 5. We will eat before and paint at 6. Cost is $35 for 16 and over and $25 for kids under 16. So please use the sign up sheet in the foyer for the attendance and the food and pay Jamie by March 12th. Well, that's all the announcements I have at this time. Uh, those that serve or will be serving this morning are song leader Bobby Colburn, opening prayer Josh Moore. Children's Time, Chase Allman. Scripture Reading, Donald Braden. Lord's Supper, Alan Gossett. And Closing Prayer, Bill Ballard. One more announcement. Today is Luke's birthday, so he gets eight birthday spankings all day today, and he would like everyone to try to give him those. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you give us this day that we have today to come together to worship you, to encourage one another, to learn more about you. Lord, I would pray that we would keep our minds focused on you at this time and shut everything else out. Lord, we thank you for giving us this wonderful world to live in. Lord, we just ask that you guard us from the worldly thinking and the, and, and the evils of the world. Lord, we look forward to being with you one day for eternity. Lord, we know that means that uh, we owe you our loyalty and our love. We uh, ask that you just give us the strength and the encouragement to get through temp tempting times to um, provide us with more wisdom and uh, to, to always be at our side. Lord, we thank you for your son that uh, came to give us the example of how to do that and ultimately became a sacrifice for us so that uh, we can be united with you again and have our sins forgiven. Lord, we ask you to be with those who aren't able to be here this morning. There may be several reasons, and Lord, we know that you know what they are, and, and we just pray that uh, you'd bring them back, perhaps use us as instruments to reach out to them. Lord, we, we pray for the leaders of, of uh, the state, of the country that we live in, that you would be with them and help them make good decisions for the whole. Uh, Lord, we pray that as a whole country and, and a land that we would be looking to you as one 
to do the things that, uh, uh, that you command that you would have us do. Lord, we thank you for the, the many blessings that you give us every day. We know that you give us all of our needs and so much of our wants. And Lord, you, you give these freely even though we don't deserve it. We thank you so very much for it. Lord, as we enter into this worship service, we pray that everything that we do that, uh, that will be focused to you, that will be um, according to your will and will be pleasing to you, Lord, we uh, pray that you would enjoy that and that uh, we would focus our minds on, on learning about you and, and coming closer to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days and step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days children's time all right children's time all the kids come up anyone unaware our children's time is where all the kids of the congregation, sixth grade and under, can come forward. We put out a bucket that they can put money in. That money goes to the needs of the kids in our area. We just have a short little time of devotional and prayer with them. Come on up, everybody. Good job. All right, y'all take a seat where you can see me. Take hey, Sadie. Good job, everybody. All right. Good job. Good working together. All right, we got it all. All right, everybody sit down and look at me. Today, I'm going to talk about to the grown-ups about following good leaders, following good examples. So I thought of a good game that you guys should know that we can help learn this lesson. Y'all know what Simon Says is? Y'all played that game? All right, we're going to play it real quick. Say to go sit down. All right, Simon Says, touch your nose. Touch your head. Oh, some of y'all just lost. All right, Simon Says, don't touch your nose. Simon Says, smile. Simon Says, make an ugly face. All right, man, some of y'all are really good at that one. Okay, now listen, Simon says, look at mommy and daddy. Good, okay. Simon says, go punch your mother in the face. Whoa, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Okay, everybody did good playing the game, but why did nobody do what I said the last time? Why, Macy? Oh. 
Oh, you'll get in trouble and God doesn't want you to do that? Yeah, that was a mean thing to say. You don't want to punch mom in the face, right? That's bad. Hey, listen, there's going to be a lot of people in this world telling you what to do, and you guys have to listen to the good ones. I promise I won't ever tell you to punch your mom in the face. That was a silly joke, okay? you got to listen to the good examples. And if someone tells you to do something bad, you stop. And you, like Macy, say, uh, Mr. Chase, I'm not going to do that because I'm a good person. Can you all remember that? Okay, bow your heads, let's pray, okay? You can repeat after me. Dear God, we love you. Please help us follow good examples like Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.
read the uh, first few verses of Matthew 28. It says, now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary, Mag Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. 
He is not here. He is risen, as he said. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the gift of your Son. Lord, as we sang in the song, our sins upon his shoulders. Lord, what our Savior had to go through to forgive us. Lord, may we always, on a daily basis, reflect on that. Lord, pray that our minds were clear this morning as we partake of this bread representing Christ's body on the cross. In his blessed name we pray. Amen. In your prayer. Lord, pray that you be with us again as we partake of this fruit of the vine representing Christ's blood shed. But let us also remember that we worship the risen Savior, that the blood shed was for us, and what a great sacrifice. Blessed name we pray. Amen.
always separate from the Lord's Supper, we're commanded to give as well. We are, uh, this money's to help further the church here. We're in the infancy of uh, food pantry. Anything that can help with that uh, as well. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for blessing us so much. The state that we're in as, as far as economically, financial. I realize some of us here have more and some have less, but we're all equal. Lord, I pray that this money given this morning will help further the, the church here. Lord, I pray that we use it in a manner well-pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for with all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the lord oh my soul his holy name sing like never before oh my soul I'll worship your holy name and on that day when my strength is failing in draws near and my time has come still my soul sing your praise unending 
10,000 years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Love one another. Would you please stand for the reading of God's word? Today's scripture reading comes from Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For, as I have often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. 
Please be seated. Good morning, church. Good to see you all out today. Hope you're having a good day so far. Certainly a good day for me. Hopefully you're sharing the same thing. Got a lot of members here as well. Some visitors too. Glad to see you. If you're uh, new here, you've been here before just a few times. Members, if you see somebody new, be sure to shake their hand, give them a hug, make them feel welcome. We're continuing our study in Philippians today, and we're going to finish chapter 3. So I hope you turn there. That's where we'll be today. And our children's time lesson carries a lot of the same themes that our adult time lesson will carry. So I'll challenge you now. Simon says to live faithfully. Now it's up to you to do exactly that. And we're going to see in our own efforts to live faithfully, it is so essential, at least for me, I'll raise my hand, it is so essential for me that I find more mature, more wise, more strong Christians than myself, and I imitate their good example. And I'm so blessed and so privileged in my life to have so many of those Christian men and women in my life that I can look up to, that I can value, that I respect and honor, and I see them as doing not a perfect job in this life, but a good job in this life for their standing. And in your examination, do not look at the physical things as we will see in Paul's, uh, in our reading here that we just read. Don't look at the physical things. Don't say, I want to have as much money as they do one day. I want the retirement home that they have. Look at the spiritual things. He seems to love the Lord. He, he has a prayer life that I, I want for my life. She seems so connected with God and her family. She's the Christian mother and grandmother that I need to be. These are the things that you should look for if you're looking for people to imitate. If you're looking for examples to follow. That's what Paul admonishes the church here to do. And that's what I carry to you now to admonish you to do. I, I'm not going to get on a soapbox too much, but just a, a little brief aside before we begin our lesson. I'll get on this soapbox over here. I'll go back in the middle. Got, got a little feedback. I wonder truly how many of our nation's problems could be solved in a few years if everybody had good examples to follow. I don't know. And that's kind of all I'm going to say about it. But how many people are lost? They don't have loved ones they can trust. They don't have examples they can look to. And the best examples, by the way, I think, in my opinion, are a good dad and a good mom. And how many people don't have that? How many problems could be fixed if we had the opportunity to show them what the life of Christ looks like? Now, I heard one amen. If you agreed with me, that the solution to many of the world's problems is that men and girl, boys and girls in difficult situations need good examples. Now, the only question then, who will be that good example? Some don't have good moms and dads. Will you then be the good example? Because that's the only option. If there's no one there in their life to show them what a good life looks like, a good Christian life looks like, it has to be you. So in as much as I'm telling you to find good examples to follow yourself, I'm also challenging you. The world needs you to be someone that they can imitate. They need to look to you to see what true love looks like, true faith looks like, true prosperity looks like. It's a challenge that we all must bear as Christians. And if you're a little hesitant, I'll answer that hesitancy as well. But look at Philippians 3, we'll get into it. Paul warns us what happens to those who follow bad examples, who, who follow after the examples that the world sets. But he also shows us what happens to those who follow righteous examples and good examples, those who call themselves Christians and who live that life out. So let's see. The first thing we notice here is Paul's charge to imitate good examples. And we'll see this from verse 17. If we've got a problem in the world where we have a lack of good examples, we need to really find those who are being a good example, lift them up maybe above the crowd so more people can see them. This is what the life is supposed to look like. And then we ourselves have to accept the challenge and say, I, in my small corner of the world, will be the good example I need to be. I don't have to minister to the millions of people that need the Lord. 
but the 100 in my circle, I can, I can bless. I can touch, and you can bless yours, and then we conquer the world all together. Look at what Paul writes in verse 17. And remember who the man is that is writing these words. So we'll comment on your hesitancy if you have any. Verse 17, Paul says, Brothers, join in imitating me, Paul says, and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. The first part, we'll break this in half. Paul says, if you need a good example, if you want to imitate someone properly that I want you to ex uh, follow, follow me. Imitate me. This should be able to be echoed by you. If you think you're not good enough or worthy enough to be imitated or followed, think of who Paul was. Think of Paul's past when he was Saul, when he was persecuting the church, when he was abusing the church, when he was imprisoning the church. Now, Paul, you've got the gall to say imitate you? Paul, even now, as a redeemed man that he is, in prison, doing incredible things for the Lord. Paul, you're still a sinner. Paul, how, how am I supposed to imitate you? Surely we can't imitate anyone other than Jesus Christ. Well, a f familiar verse for you should be 1 Corinthians 1, verse 11. Paul echoes this sentiment as he writes to the Corinthian church, be imitators of me as I am of who, church? Christ. Paul is saying, you can follow me because I am following Christ. If I take a misstep, if I leave the path momentarily, don't adopt my mistakes, don't adopt my shortcomings, don't imitate all of me, but my life's goal, Paul says, as every Christian should say, is following Jesus. That should be your goal too. So as I follow Jesus, you follow me. You're really following Jesus, but if he's too intimidating, Paul says, you can follow me. I say, you can follow me. You say, son, daughter, cousin, friend, family member, co-worker, you can follow the broken, miserable, wretch of a sinner that I am too. It's not because of who we are, it's because of who Jesus is. That's why Paul can confidently say, imitate me. That's why you and I can confidently say, as we follow Christ, world, you can follow us. Now, you've got to take this personally. You've got to apply this now. If they follow you, will they follow your feet to church? Will they follow your feet into the mission field? Will they follow your feet in love? You've got to apply it here. This isn't just imitate all of you. This is imitate the good in you. How much good in you is there to imitate? So apply this personally. Imitate good examples. And Paul says, I volunteer. If you cannot volunteer, you've got to take a hard look at your faith. Because it's who you are in Christ that makes you imitatable and followable. Makes you a leader. But then Paul says, it's not only me. I'm not the hero. I'm not the one man that you've got to turn to. And keep your eyes, he says, on those who walk according to the example you have in us, being himself the apostles, the ministers of the church. Anyone doing good in the faith, he says, not just myself, follow them. Keep your eyes on them. You know how many good Christian men and women we have here at Grace Point? You think we've got a shortage of good leaders that we can follow here? Or do we have a surplus? I think we've got a surplus here in our small number. Uh, he just put it up of 140 here today. How many here today do we have that are imitatable, that are good examples? We've got so many. And when I would call them out, and I won't, they may put their hand down. They may say, no, don't follow me. And that's part of the good part of themselves that makes them someone you should follow. We've got so many good examples. We need to live worthy lives of the call to be people that others can imitate. And we've got to exonerate people that are living good lives. We've got to lift them up. We've got to give them a pat on the back and say, I notice you living faithfully. I'm so thankful for your example. I, how many women my daughters look up to? I can't begin to think. How, my wife, first and foremost, is a great Christian woman. But how many other great Christian women there are that my daughters can see and they can follow their example? It's my job as a father to say, this is what I want you to do. This is what it looks like. This is what being a Christian is all about. But I also, I've got to live it out myself. 
And, and maybe dads were guilty of this the most. I can't say, go follow that guy if dad is a bum at home. I've got to be a good guy too. So be someone that the world can imitate and give the world people that they can imitate. Ultimately, we are imitatable. Others are Im imitatable because of Jesus. Next, if we're following the good examples, we've got to recognize the evil examples and reject the evil examples. And I intentionally did not put bad there. There are plenty of bad people, but the ones you should look out for and never imitate are the evil ones. And you'll be surprised how much those go hand in hand. Many people in this world are absolutely consumed by their worldly desires. So in me, you may find some bad, but I'm redeemed by Christ, so I am a worthy example. And again, it sounds brazen to say, but I'm putting all the glory on Christ. If there is someone who does not have Jesus in their life, they have nothing good. They have nothing redeemable. Their love, their grace, their mercy, it's all worthless. It's all cheap imitations of the true glory and love and mercy of Christ. So if someone does not have Christ and they're consumed by their worldly passions, you must reject that evil example. And Paul says what happens to those who follow after this path. There's only two roads in life. There's only two destinations. One goes to heaven, one goes to hell. You can look ahead of your leader and see where they're going if you're wise enough. Let's see first what happens to those on the wrong path. Look at what 18 and 19 says again. For many of whom I have often told you, they should be familiar with these, and now tell you even again, with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. Now, some of that verse applies too much to myself. Makes me a little uncomfortable. I, I like my belly. Sometimes I could probably say that's my God. If I'm hangry, if I'm hungry, I'm following that beast. Uh, some of you may be the same. You know how many times my life is filled with concern over earthly things? Paul says, these things in part make you, back to verse 18, not a bad person, an enemy of the cross of Christ. If you're consumed by these things, if you live purely and alone in these things, you not are just a bad, immoral person who needs a second chance. You are an enemy of the cross of Christ. There is nothing worse. You cannot get below that. There's nothing worse more wretched than an enemy of the cross of Christ. But first, it, it, as we reject evil examples, we've got to do it with love. Paul says, I tell you about the enemies of the cross of Christ in tears. It destroys me. The fact that there are even enemies of the cross of Christ. And, and they go on. They, they revel in it. They glory in their shame. Ha how rare is shame these days? <laughs> how, how rare is it the fact that people say, oh, I realize I did a bad thing. They revel in it. They glory in it. But Paul says, that doesn't make me happy. I'm not glad as the good guy that the bad guys are suffering. I cry for them. I hate the fact that there are enemies of the cross of Christ. But you better not be one. That's the ultimate purpose here. There are enemies of the cross of Christ. There were then and there are now. I don't think there's anyone here today that would deny the fact that there are enemies of the cross of Christ today. It's hard to follow an enemy of the cross and go to heaven. You can't do it. They're opposed to it. So don't follow the enemy of the cross and don't let their identification factors match yours. Don't follow merely the physical desires. That could be the belly there. Don't be driven by your carnal nature like an animal. Don't glory in your shame. Let that conviction bring you back to forgiveness and back to glory when you feel it. Don't push it away. Don't set your minds purely on earthly things. Situate yourself comfortably. That's fine. But focus on the spiritual things, on the heavenly things. Reject these evil examples. Don't follow after them. Someone tells you to punch a mother in, your fa in their face, laugh at them. Reject them. That trick's not going to work on me. You're an enemy of the cross. You're not my leader. 
I'm not following you. I'm following someone far better. Reject evil examples. Imitate the good ones, reject the bad ones. And as you reject the bad ones, and as you imitate the good ones, we finally see, remember your citizenship. Remember what it's all about. Remember where you're going. Remember why you're here. That's what Paul says. As Christians, our goal is to get to our heavenly kingdom. It is not only to live moral lives here. Simon says, go to heaven. All right? That's the goal. That's the purpose. That's why Paul could suffer in the way that he was and say it's all worth it. It's for the glory of Christ that I'm in prison right now. It's for his purpose. Whatever he does with me, I'm okay with it. Because I am not of this world. I'm a straying pilgrim. I'm just passing through. I'm not going to concern myself with the carnival in town and with what they're doing. I'm going to get to where I'm going. And every step I take gets me closer and closer to glory, not closer and closer to shame. My house, my home, is in the final kingdom of God. We can make that a partial reality today. I've said many times that a Christian life is the best life there is. We can make it as good as possible. But we can't come close to how good heaven's going to be. That's why you follow good examples. So you can follow them and lead others into heaven. That's where you're going. That's why you live the lives you live. Paul, it's too hard to be a Christian. I want to give up. Remember the end. And again, look ahead of your leaders. Are they leading you to glory or are they leading you to destruction and shame? And pick the right one. Pick the one that's going to lead you to glory. Pick the one that's going to lead you to God's kingdom. That's what our hope is in. We have Jesus to look forward to. Look at what he says in verse 20 and 21. This is the good example. Our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body by the power that enables Him even to subject all things to Himself. The same power that He uses to reject evil, He exalts the good. He lifts up the righteous. This is what we need to remember. This is what we need to focus on. Verse 20. We're going to heaven. That's where I belong. That's where my home is. And because of that, I now, unlike the unrighteous, have hope. My hope is in Jesus, my Lord Jesus Christ. My Savior and my Lord is coming to redeem me. I'm waiting for my Savior to come down from heaven and say, hey, I've got a spot for you. You ready to fill it? You ready to go home? Whenever that is, and it could be tomorrow, I'm on the path now to get me there to be transformed. I don't like this lowly body anymore. I don't like being controlled by something as silly as my hunger. And all the carnal nature really is as silly as physical hunger. It's all just your animal instincts. Follow the flesh. I want to be transformed, don't you? I want to follow something glorious. I want to receive the glorious body. He's got the power to do it, Paul says. Don't go off path. If you complete the journey, you will be transformed. And we're going to see when we get to chapter 4 more about what living that life looks like. And there's almost a checklist that we'll see next week. The good things you need to put into your life that can keep you on this right path. But we, church, need to imitate good examples. The Philippian church then needed to do it and the Grace Pointing in church today needs to do it now. We need to imitate good examples. We need to follow, ultimately... Jesus. And when we see Jesus in our brother, when we see Jesus in our fellow Christian, then we can imitate them as well. We can exalt them. We can lift them up. We can give them the attaboy, the attagirl that they need so desperately. Don't let them burn out, but walk arm in arm being the light to the world. We, be, we live lives worthy of imitation so that we can shine the light of God into the world of darkness. We don't want to leave the people in the dark. We don't want to say, I've got my conga line and you're not in it. Join the party. Come on in. Get in line. Get your ticket to the bus. Whatever illustration you want to use, I just want to get you to heaven. And the only way to do that is through Jesus. He's the only one that's got the power to give you glory.
There is no one else. You think someone in this world has power? You are mistaken. It is only Jesus. So imitate the good examples. Reject the evil ones. Abandon them. Laugh at them. I'm not following you. Who are you? You think you've got authority over my life? You think the problems of the world bother me? I'm following someone much better. I'm following Jesus. And you can too. And hopefully, the shame of the world is enough to bring you to tears on their behalf. We need to mourn for them. We need to grieve for them. Pray for them that they may see reason. That they too can follow good examples. And when that seed of truth finally produces something, we need to be there to fill that gap. To solve their problems by being the good example they need. And they can find that in anyone. They need to find that in you. They need to find that in me. And you can only be qualified to do that by who you are in Christ. So if today you are outside of Christ, you cannot possibly be the example they need to get them to heaven. But fortunately for you, there's a solution. You can be baptized into Christ to wash away your shame, to wash away your wickedness, to wash away the destruction in your life to receive glory and forgiveness and mercy, to be a Christian finally and truly. But if you have been saved already and you just have not been the leader or the example that your family and your friends desperately need, you've got it in you. You might just need the church to encourage you. So if we can baptize you into Jesus today and forgive your sins, or if we can pray for you, we invite you now to come while we stand and while we sing. to linger charmed by the world's delight things that are higher things that are nobler these have allured my sight I will hasten to him hasten so glad and free
As we sing here on earth songs of sadness or mirth, tis a foretaste of rapture to come. But our joy can't compare with the glory up there when all of God's singers get home. When all of God's singers get home, where never a sorrow will come. There'll be no place like home when all of God's singers get home. Having overcome sin, hallelujah, amen, we'll be heard in that land or the foam. Every heart will be light and each face will be bright when all of God's singers get home. When all of God's singers get home, where never a sorrow will come. There'll be no place like home when all of God's singers get home. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day. We're so thankful we could assemble here today. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for the congregation here at Grace Point and so thankful for all of its members. We're so thankful for all the young children we have here. And Dear Lord, we just ask that you help us to be good examples to one another and to those children. Dear Lord, we ask that you please be with those of our number that are sick or recovering from surgeries and treatments and dear lord we just ask that you watch over them and restore them to their health if it be thy will dear lord we're so thankful for the opportunities you give us each and every day and dear lord help us to use those opportunities to spread your word and to bring souls to you dear lord we just ask that you be with us throughout our work week and help us to be examples Dear Lord, we're so thankful for your son that you sent to this earth. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen.